Welcome back to the Kessel Run. My name is Danny. I'm joined here today with Heather from the Whovian Perspective. Hello. So our first bit of news, uh, Hayden Christensen has actually been invited to Star Wars Celebration. It's confirmed that he's going to be there um, this next week, actually. So Celebration's kind of sneaking up on us. Uh, but yeah, it's the first time that he's been here in 15 years. Heather? I kind of feel like... I didn't really have a problem with his performance as much as some people did, but I would stay away too because the <laughs> Star Wars fans are quite um, vocal. That's one way to put it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and then with that, I don't feel like it was entirely his fault or anything for the people who have the complaints with the prequels. I mean, there, there are complaints with it, but it, it tells its own story and you've got to kind of take right. it for what it is. Yeah. Wasn't that really the character, though? Absolutely. I mean, the, the character was a whiny little brat that didn't get his way, and... Uh, sounds kind of like uh, Luke, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, our next bit of news is that coming from uh, MakingStarWars.net, uh, there is a rumor that there is going to be a Kenobi solo film uh, helmed by Gareth Edwards announced at Star Wars Celebration. Uh, personally, I don't know how much more you can really tell about Obi-Wan Kenobi um, because we saw him as a Padawan from Episode 1, Phantom Menace, um, all throughout Clone Wars with Anakin, and then we see him go into hiding as a hermit, and then we got to see him with Maul and everything. I mean, I feel like we've told his story. I think the only part of his story I would like to see is, uh, I, mean, I can't remember her name, but the, uh, the queen from Mandalore. I think right. I'd like to see that. Uh, but what do you think about it? Um, I mean, it's the Disney, Disney machine. They they crank out movie after movie after movie. And um, I hope that they can do it justice. Maybe there is a story untold. Um, I'm not convinced yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll be convinced when I see yeah. it, though. Absolutely. Kenobi's one of my, you know, I love Kenobi, so... Yeah. Maybe they're going to draw him out and okay. create uh, another story. But even drawing him out even once will mm -hmm. tell people that he's there. Right. I feel like it would be a, a really careful story to tell. Because like you said, anything that you pull out, it could undermine what's already there. And right. so with that, it, I don't know. Like, that would be that would be tough. Um, it I mean, would be. I love Kenobi. I, I would definitely be into seeing him. Uh, a friend of mine was actually telling me he'd like to see him even more during the Clone Wars. So live action in his armor that he had most of the time and stuff like that. Um, right. But I don't know. <laughs> I really like Kenobi as far as his discipline and um, his ability to channel the Force into, you know, but... I mean, ultimately, it's been told. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, I, I hear you. And it, will, and it would be cool, too, um, with Gareth Edwards, who's the director of Rogue One. Uh, he's the one that's rumored to helmet. So, I mean, I think it would be neat to see. So, we'll... Oh, I think it would be neat to see. I just <laughs> yeah. don't know if it's, you know, I don't right. know. The Disney machine, to me, <laughs> just keeps cranking them out. <laughs> And it will forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's been bought. Now Absolutely. It's be <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so this week, uh, Tuesday actually, uh, we had the release of Rogue One to Blu ray, DVD, uh, and all that. Um, today we got to actually watch that together, which was really cool. Um, yes, I got my copy. <laughs> I was so excited. Absolutely. So, what is your review on it? I really, really like that movie. Um, it's one of my favorite Star Wars movies. It shows that even the Rebellion has their side of the war. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, shades of gray weave through all we do. Right. And to me, showing the duplicity of, the, of that side was, you know, very cool. You know, so many of them, you know... Yeah. so pristine and oh yeah <laughs> well, well and it was one thing that was cool that i thought where like you were saying the duplicity of all of it because you never think to think the good guys have their troubles um and right. that maybe the good guys aren't so good um right. because with the original trilogy with the rebellion it was painted literally like you said black and white light and dark there was no in between 
Um, and it was never something to me as a kid or even growing up that I thought about of, hey, maybe the Rebellion could have their dark side. Um, and Rogue right. One showed that underbelly. And I really hope that we get some of that in Star Wars Rebels in the animated series. I do too. That would be I cool to too. see how they uh, deal with that. Well, they're growing in Star Wars Rebels. I think that it's coming. Like I said earlier, you know, wars are not won off of the backs of the uh, of the lawful good. Right. And next up, we have our fan film of the week. From Whitelist Productions, we have Kara. It's a story about a young girl who has an affinity to the Force. Uh, and I don't want to ruin it for you, but it's really awesome. It's written and directed by Joe Sill, uh, produced by Weston Ray. I thought that they really um, targeted the story of some random gal who has these powers and how it would be in an environment like that, you know, where that is just so taboo and unheard of. Absolutely. Which, yeah. So I thought, yeah, the special effects weren't. Um, particularly jarring in the way that um, some are fan films are, mm -hmm. but um, I really liked it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I really was caught off guard by the part where she actually picked up the stormtroopers um, and was kind of losing to her passion and her anger. I thought that was really neat because with the with the force powers, I mean, it's not always just the good guys who find out they have them. Right. Uh, so, I, I yeah. thought it was cool. Like, you could hear the bones breaking mm -hmm. when she's like, yeah. So, well, and, and it kind of gives you that view into what if a normal person found that they had the Force? They didn't have the training of, and the discipline of the Jedi or either the Sith, even. Um, it's just, I have these things. I can control this, this force, this movement. And I, I think that's really neat to see in it. Or not control it. Stay down! Thank you guys so much for joining the Kessel Run. I really appreciate you guys tuning in every single Friday. Uh, you can find me at superpoweredfancast.com, at superpoweredfan on Twitter, and Facebook, superpoweredfancast. Uh, you can even email me your fan film suggestions or anything you want to see on the show, superpoweredfancast at gmail.com. Uh, and again, with me, thank you so much, Heather, for joining me. You're welcome. It was always a blast. Definitely. And where can they find you? Um, I can be found at fightymadlady.com, and you can contact me at thewhoperspective at gmail.com. Awesome. Until next time, guys, may the Force be with you.